Hi folks, it's Keith Victor Echo 3, Sierra Victor Quebec, otherwise known as the shaky key for my Morse code abilities and also for the blog I run. Now it's interesting because this is the 1st of March and we're starting to get into the warmer weather, which of course is great for POTA. We get more people out there. And what reminded me was a note I had from uh, Victor Alpha 2 November Whiskey. And he was talking about going on a POTA park expedition next weekend and with a couple of friends. And I thought, now, he's got the right idea. I mean, let's get out there. We have to get out there. And if he can bring somebody along, do so. Now, I noticed one of his friends does a lot of CW. The others do phone. So what a great way to activate a park. You know, you're getting contacts both on the CW side and on the phone side. So that helps out an awful lot of the, the people who hunt parks. So I just thought, thinking about it, Ottawa's not that big a POTA area from, uh, from what I can see. When I look at the parks, I tend to see a lot of the same call signs in there. You know, a couple of dozen people maybe. Um, down my end, I'm in the south end of the city, more rural, I tend to see four or five of the same call signs all the time. So it'd be nice to expand the number of people who do this. It would be fun to get more people out there. And I think, you know, when you look at it, it's pretty simple, but most of us make it way too complicated. And I know when I started, uh, after watching, I don't know how many videos, my goodness, I think it took me three months of planning to realize that I really didn't have to do any of that. It could make it a much simpler idea. So here we are with the warmer weather, daylight savings on uh, on the 12th. And, you know, more daylight time, so more activating time as well. So I thought, well, let's just look at this and, and see. We're getting more opportunity, so I'm just going to call this 10 Rules for First Timers, although it can apply to people like myself as well. First rule number one, keep it simple. Don't overthink. Don't overplan. And above all, don't over-equip yourself. If you don't know if you're going to enjoy this part of the hobby, don't go out and spend a fortune. After you've done it a few times, you're going to know if you like to do this. Then that's when you can invest in the money. And that's actually another reason for going out with someone else. You know, if uh, it's your first time and you can buddy up with somebody and see how they do it, it might help you out as well. So number two, was just what I said, don't overthink. Don't get wrapped up in all the videos you see with fancy setups and tents and you know, who knows what. There are people who love to do POTA that way and that's great, that's fantastic. There are others like myself who don't have the time or the money for that matter to do it. You adjust to your circumstances. Use what you have first before you invest in anything else. Use a checklist. You know, I think there's probably everybody in POTA one time or another has forgotten some key element at home. Have your checklist. And even though you think you know it, it doesn't hurt to run down your checklist just before you head out the door. And I've done that where I got to a park and realized I left one of the most essential items for it the mass because I was using a wire antenna on that one. So, you know, turn around, come back, pick it up, then go back to the park. All those things. Use your checklist. At this time of the year too, it's always a good thing to check your park first and even in the summer. Um, some parks are not open yet. Some of them are just going to be, you know, that the drive in is just going to be a sea of mud. So if you can, take a drive by your park, take a look. In the summertime, you know, Where's the parking lot? Where are you going to put your antenna? You know, is there a beach? Is there water? All these things, these, this all comes in, into play. So if you can, do a drive by your park. I did one by the other day, which I was actually planning to activate the next day. We'd had a snowstorm. It wasn't plowed and hadn't been plowed probably all winter. So there was no way I was getting into that park, even though it was listed as being open. So these are the things that you have to look for. What type of antenna? Decide in advance what type of antenna you're going to use. There's no point trying to bring two or three because you're probably not going to have time to set them up. What type of antenna you're going to use? If you're going to a particular park, where are you going to put it? 
you know, if you're in a park which is perfectly flat with no trees and you're planning on using a wire antenna, did you bring a mask? There's no trees to throw a wire up into. Number six, be organized, you know, just be comfortable with your setup. Make sure you've got what you need. Make sure you know how to use what you're using. You know, it's one of those things where you're sitting down and you're ready to go and you're working a pile up. You don't want to go halfway to the pile up and go, geez, I didn't bring enough paper. Plan, plan, but don't overthink. So be comfortable with your setup. Know where you're going to put everything. Rule number seven, where are the washrooms? Did you bring food? Or is there food being sold at that park? Is there water? You know, some parks that I use have water fountains. Others don't, so I need water. And if you're working a, a pile up and your voice is getting hoarse, always a good thing to have some water. Rule number eight, Give yourself enough time to make the 10 contacts that you need. You know, I, in my situation, I usually do two hour, basically two hour slots. That's all I allow myself. But I've got it down to the point now where when I set up, I know I'm going to get my 10 contacts unless the bands are absolutely dead that day. But give yourself enough time, especially when you're, you're out your first two, three, four times and, it, you know, you're still trying to, get your setup done properly and everything else. And there's always little things that go wrong. Give yourself enough time to make your 10 contacts. And for our Canadians uh, who watch this, make sure you're in the right part of the bands for the US. Some parts of the bands in the US are relatively quiet. And I'll give you an example. If you're on the 20 meter band and you want to contact a lot of people, your best spot to be is somewhere above 14 point uh, was it 225 get above that that's where the bulk of the u.s amateurs are and you'll make a lot more contacts when i first started i didn't think of that and i was struggling to get 10 contacts and if you go back and you look at my old activations most of them are like 12 13 14 and that was because i was in the wrong part of the band that was a u.s ham uh, i think i was around i don't know Low, low 14, somewhere around 14, maybe 200, 215. And he came on and he was talking to me and he said, you know, you need to go up about 10, 15 higher and you'll get a lot more contacts. And I listened to him and I moved and boy, it was like night and day. So if you're really struggling, make sure you're in the right part of the bands for whatever, whatever band you happen to be on. Rule number nine, when you're finished, Go log your results with the Canadian challenge. Why not? This is a Canadian thing, open to Canadians. Why not throw your names in? The more people that get involved, you may not win anything, but it's motivating when you put your numbers up there. It's also motivating when they publish the monthly scores and you see yourself in there. So it's always good. And last rule, always have fun. You know, don't get too frustrated. Have fun. And you know, when it's over, talk it up with other ham radio operators. There's so many people out there who don't do this. There's so many people who have radios sitting in their basement that they rarely ever use, except maybe to go into one or two contests a year. It's a great way to convince them that this is a fun activity for ham radio. And it's fun to get outside and into the fresh air and into the parks. So there you go. Just a few thoughts from Victor Echo 3, Sierra Victor, Quebec. The Shaky Key, wishing you a great day. 73.